I'm hiding in a creek because I don't want everybody to know about this bait mod I'm about to show you. Mikey Ball's fishing. Stay tuned. Nice. Whoa. That go. Welcome to Mikey Balls Fishing. This is what we're going to be talking about today. And no, it's not another buyer's guide. I actually have some DIY mods that I want to show you on some crankbaits and some things that I do that I think just get more bites and make things more efficient. They're kind of cool modifications. Pretty simple to do. One of them, all you need is one of these. We'll talk about it. But before we get started, make sure to like and subscribe if you dig mods and big bass. And bass from Alabama, bass from Florida, bass from everywhere! The universal bass. We've had a really good time here in Florida, dude. We caught some giants already. The schools are starting to show up. It's a great time to talk about some of these crankbait mods. And ironically, I'm trying to be cheap, and I, I think I always talk to you guys about that. And one of my favorite baits for, like, finesse cranking is this guy, and we've talked about it. But literally, I have this one left, and it runs untrue. It's because I broke two of them off. It runs untrue, and I cannot get it to go true. So there, there's a reason along with the fact that this has kind of like a finesse cranking style to it that I think it gets bites in Florida and that has to do with our DIY tip. We'll get to that. But let's do some, some basic crankbait mods real quick. What do you need to do to catch more fish and be more efficient with cranks? So when I first started doing some of this offshore fishing, I freaking made a huge mistake. If you guys watch, what is, what's that one show? I think I've made a huge mistake. Rest of development. So I, I actually don't think, I know I made a huge mistake. So what I did is I didn't change out my hooks. And dude, I literally watched myself in about 25, 30 minutes. You can go back and watch the video. I think it's called losing 35 pounds or 30 pounds in 20 minutes. Like literally I watched seven pounder after eight pounder go, oh, hey Mikey, peace, I'm out of here. Like dude, just freaking blow out the hooks. And it's gonna happen sometimes. It's a lot like flipping, you know, you're gonna lose fish flipping, you're gonna lose fish cranking. It, it's a given part of the process because you're just dealing with a bait that's, you know, fish come off of, dude, with treble hooks especially. It's just one of those deals. But at the same time, you can increase your odds. So I just wanna reiterate one tip, change out your hooks. You know, we were just talking about my broken crankbait that I'm really pissed about. These are halfway okay hooks, you know, they're pretty stout that it comes standard with, but at the same time, they just, they, they don't hold up for giant fish. They don't keep them gripped. It's just freaking one of those things that you want to change out. Obviously, we're catching some giant fish down here on crankbaits. So it's one of those things where, you know, I, I want to kind of oversize. You can't over oversize, but I think we're running, um, these are like number twos, I think, on here. Um, if I was fishing maybe a little further north than that, I'd probably, you know, go like a little bit smaller maybe two steps smaller or so but you don't want to go too small because the other thing that does happen too is at some point you do start taking away from action on the bait um it's a lot like i think we talked about it when we were talking about like the vision 110 with the the mega bass and the jerk baits until i went and hung out with like benjamin and caleb i mean i kind of knew but i didn't know how much hook size can affect the action of a bait how it sits in the water how it suspends especially with those suspending jerk baits so you really need to be careful with your hook size don't oversize them unless you, you kind of need to. And these are on the brink of oversized, but I still get decent action from the bait. Here's a little cool part too. Sometimes as well, you can put a little bit bigger hook on the front, which obviously helps hold on the fish. But what it also does is it weights the bait forward. So you might want to put like a number two on the front and then a little bit smaller one on the tail. I don't know, I don't think I did that here. Actually, I. No, I didn't do that here. But it's a cool mod that you can do. When the bait's weighted forward like that, it tends to sit in the water and it'll float slower back up from the bottom. So if you have fish that are a little bit more lethargic, you can play with it. But until like I talked to those guys about the spending jerks, I had no idea what a big deal it was. Change out your hooks. It can turn a a day of like awesome into super awesome because you hook everything and you just you you're you land more fish, dude. Your numbers go up. Change your hooks. One of the themes of this channel other than real fishing, being a one-third quarter douchebag, efficiency. Efficiency, efficiency. That's one of the big lessons. And you know what? One of the reasons I like really emphasize efficiency is because like I kind of suck. You know, some people are like naturally talented and stuff. I'm not, dude. At least at fishing. I can do some things. But like at fishing, 
it's all work, dude. And half the time, I don't figure this stuff out then. Like, so the more time I can save being efficient is the more time I have to fail. Because if you fail enough, at some point you succeed. That, that's your, your life lesson from this video. Like, you might not be the best at something, but fail enough. And at one point you'll win. It's just a law of statistics. This is a clip. Now, here's the best part. The one I recommend using is an owner. It's welded shut. Now, if you go on Tackle Warehouse, which there's a link below to it, it's an owner hyperlock or hyperlink uh, crankbait clip. So if you go on Tackle Warehouse and read the reviews, all these people hate on this thing. Like, hate it. You should read the comments. Some of them are like vicious, dude. They're wrong. <laughs> Like, I, I don't know, I don't know if they were using, like, 79-pound braid and expecting to, like, put a hook on this and, like, jerk on it and it would hold, I don't, I have no idea. So, I've never had a problem with these. I use them on 10-pound fluorocarbon and 12-pound fluorocarbon. I don't use them for, for rattle traps, I don't use them for anything else but, but crankbaits, square bills. Um, deep divers, all that kind of stuff. I won't use them on, you know, jerk baits or anything like that. Now what's so great about these? One, they're welded shut so your line doesn't get caught on any of this stuff. It's super simple, super streamlined. They're strong. When you read those comments, I don't know what they're thinking, but they're super strong. What it allows you to do is two things. One, and probably the most important thing, it allows you to change out crankbaits super duper fast. So as I mentioned in some of the other videos, I think we did like a long lining tutorial and we talked about various like deep diving crankbaits. I have different orders and different gradients of cranks that I use, like, you know, hyper aggressive crankbaits that have a real tight wobble that dig real hard and make a lot of vibration. And then we have this freaking thing which won't run true, which is driving me nuts, whatever. It's more finesse style, it's more subtle presentation. Um, it's finesse cranking, you know, it has a softer wobble, the edges aren't so hardened, so it's not, it's just different kind of cranks. I like to change them out, especially when you're long lining, dude. Like you have this line set up, you're on it, you need to be efficient, you need to be able to change things out quickly. These things allow you to do it. Secondary thing that they allow is they also protect the line a little bit. You have them attached right here. Sometimes it protects the line against the bill. It'll protect the line against the mouth of the fish, et cetera, et cetera. It's just a little bit of a, a leader. I've never had issues with fish not biting it as much. I used to tie the cranks directly. What a waste of time. But definitely put a clip on there when you're cranking. I, like even square bills, dude. Like it's just, it's handy. It also keeps the bait like setting like that when it floats up, which is kind of nice. Clips, check them out. It's like the owner hyperlock. Re read the freaking reviews on that. I like, I mean, I'm not trying to be mean, but like, I've literally never had a problem with this. I can see having a problem if you put 90 pound braid on it and try to put a hook on it and jack fish, but like, I, I, it's supposed to be used for like clipping on crankbaits and stuff. Try it out though. So I think I mentioned to you guys that I'm kind of pissed because this bait will not run true. So I'm pissed. This is annoying. Here's the biggest problem. I'm not a super duper color guy, but one thing I've learned in Florida, and I think it applies in Alabama too, we're, we're gonna find out, but this is true in Florida. And like, I, you can t say whatever you want, but I will tell you, I've tried and trusted this from South Florida to Central Florida to North Florida, and it is 100% true. If you have bigger fish that eat brim, you need to have a crankbait that has brake lines on it. Okay, it sounds really freaking stupid because color isn't a big, dude, I'm telling you, like bigger fish like let me show you my other one see how it has the brake lines on it okay i swear to you that pattern i i actually don't even care too much what color it's in it's just that pattern is killer and i think it's because you know the fish never really see the bait like totally it's going but that breakup just like when you have like swirl colors and plastics like back at you um killer g those swirl colors are kind of a blend they're a mishmash of of really viable colors so when this is moving so fast so fast past the bass it's kind of like that blend it's more of a natural look it actually looks like a fish swimming because the fish swimming looks kind of i mean they have good eyesight but it's like a blur dude it's a blur of of these colors that they're used to seeing or these shades that they're used to seeing so it's just more realistic. But what pisses me off is I am literally about to go fish a school and I want a long line and I don't have any more of these. Come on, Rapala, tighten up. This one was straight out of the box. It wouldn't run true. I was so pissed. I've had really good luck with these and they freaking never had them not run true like that. Pissed. So that leads us to our DIY tip. So I have this one. Well, what, what's the problem with this one? Well, this one's like a really pretty color. Let me open it up here. See, it's actually, I literally opened this on the video. Did you hear the glue coming off? 
This one's a really pretty color, isn't it? It's like shad. Actually, this blue, ironically, it's supposed to look like a shad, but it freaking, um, that, that blue iridescent look is what some of the brim look like out here. So, what's the problem? It doesn't have the breakup. Yeah. So here's what we're gonna do. Let me pull this up. Yes. King size. Wow, that, that sounds filthy. Okay, don't grab a Sharpie. I think you guys know where this is going. Never grab a Sharpie. Sharpies, when you like throw them for a while, they're gonna wipe off. This is gonna wipe off at some point, but it's gonna last longer than a Sharpie. These are the metal, like old school, like remember like in the 80s if you were alive then? <laughs> they would sniff markers. These are the ones you wanted to sniff, all right? This, these, these are the ones. Like basically, if you do this in your house, dude, your kids or your girl or whoever like lives there is gonna be like, bro, why'd you have to use a marker in the house? Bro, it won't go away for like two or three hours. <laughs> I did it up my parents' house to another bait. It reeked in there all night. It was, it's kind of funny, but I'm sort of a terrorist. So, all right. So what we're gonna do is this. We're just gonna put a breakup pattern on here. And what I like to do is just. So literally, that's it. And I guarantee you're gonna get more bites. It's the stupidest thing. Like you just do kind of like a squiggle. It doesn't need to be super straight. It doesn't need to be perfect either. The one thing you need to make sure you do though, we're out in the sun so it, it isn't, it's a little chilly out here, but it isn't too bad. You gotta let it dry long enough. Like let it dry for like five or 10 minutes. Let it really seep in there. Um, like I said, it's not gonna last forever, but when you're in a predicament like I'm right now, like this sucks. I wanna go long line. I think I know where there's another school out there. I wanna go long line because in the past, that's how I've caught, like I can catch fish throwing plastics at them, but I can get bigger fish long lining. So. I need that breakup because that's, if nothing else, that's what I have confidence in and it works in Florida. So I'm gonna do this to the other side, but break the pattern up and you can do it on just about anything. If you got like, you know, like a chartreuse style bait, like I think when you have a crankbait that's like one total color, it, it's too much. It's actually the same reason, I, I don't think I ever shared that tip. Okay, so here's, I'm gonna throw this at you. I don't have one on deck. Um, if you ever buy like a Ben Parker spoon or just like a regular spoon, maybe I have a right. total DIY tip away from crankbaits. I'm gonna have to like retitle this video now. So I really think the breakup is important. So here's what I did. Along with bite marks on there, if you can see them, I'm gonna like angle this. I take a piece of really fine grit sandpaper and I sand that thing. Do you see that on there? How it's like really finely sanded. I think breaking up any pattern is hugely important with baits because it looks more natural and more importantly, even if fish can't see color, I don't know what the whole debate is on that. Fish can't see color. They see the way light reflects and re reflects off of an object. And when you have various breakups, it changes the way that light reflects off the object and it breaks it up, which makes it more natural because nothing in nature is perfect. Leonardo da Vinci. That looks like an alligator. That right there is a freaking alligator roaming around my boat. I don't like this. So if you guys enjoy these tip videos and these DIY mods, make sure to like and subscribe, support the channel. You guys have always been there for me. I appreciate it. Love hanging out with you guys and shooting these kinds of videos, talking to you in the comments, talking to you via messages. It means a lot to me, dude. And you guys, like I said, man, like I wouldn't be doing any of this if it weren't for you, which is freaking awesome. So thank you a bunch. Make sure to like and subscribe. We will see you next time for more tips and techniques. But I think next time we're just doing fishing. Heard enough of me talking, right? Tight lines, guys. Peace.